Last week we looked at the function of the fatherhood of God. He said, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. And we looked at that from the perspective that how can a branch be in him and not bear fruit? And we concluded that it is not the source you are connected with that matters as much as your response to that source. <laughs> Amen. It is what you do. It is the, the actions you take. And so faith, when we begin to look at and we want to understand what faith is, faith is simply trust. Faith is what? Tr basically, the foundation of faith is trust. But then it goes beyond trust. Because if I claim that I trust then my trust must produce certain actions that prove that truly I trust. If I trust that this chair can take my weight, then I will not hesitate to sit down. And so sitting down is the corresponding action to my saying I trust. And so throughout the scriptures, you see God keeps saying, trust me. That is the message of the gospel. Noah trusted, he built the ark even when there was no sign of rain. Abraham trusted, he kept giving glory to God when even it looked impossible. And the Bible says, without faith, we cannot please God. Without faith, we cannot please God. Why is that? Why is it that without faith, we cannot please God? But the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I said, you know, the word of God produces something called hearing. In other words, the, when the word of God comes, except you hear, it cannot turn to faith. And so there is a process whereby your spirit man or your heart catches it. Because sometimes when it is in the head, it does not produce action. It produces reasoning and disputes and arguments. When it enters the heart, you cannot but act it because out of the heart proceeds everything that happens in life. And so the hearing state is such an important state. And why does it please God? The Bible says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. It pleases God because when the word produces hearing to the point where you now act on it, God sees himself in you. Ha. When the moment you stand up in order to respond to what you trust in, God sees himself in you because God and his word are one. I want you to know that God has trusted you with himself by giving us his word. Hallelujah. 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 Now, when I look at this that Jesus talked about, I also feel challenged when Jesus said in Luke 18, Pastor Joseph referred to that this morning. In verse 8, Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Why did Jesus make that statement? What was he talking about? What are the challenges that he envisions at the end of the age? Because truly, as knowledge multiplies, as technology increases, we have many more distractions. We have what? We have many more distractions. We, you see, when a tree is connected to the, the, uh, to the vine, there are, internal, there are internal circumstances. There are internal things that are happening. Okay? The leaves take uh, the sun chlorophyll and the, the root takes water. So, Things are happening from both sides in order for the fruit to be produced. But what happens if we are not careful, we become so distracted by the external things, we lose sight of the internal process. And the internal process is perhaps the most important. 
because your connection to God is deeper and gives you more insight than whatever your eyes can see or whatever your ears can hear. Those are so temporary. There is something beyond what you can see. There is something beyond what you can hear. Even with technology, now I can speak to somebody in China in real time or speak to somebody in Australia and one of us will have to wake up you know, because of the time difference. But technology makes us to be able to traverse long distances. But it's impossible for you to see Newcastle now where you are here. Praise God. And that brings me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it been revealed to the heart of man what God has prepared. That which comes from that connection in God is beyond what your eyes can physically see. It's beyond what your ears can physically hear. And so, building a trust in him when you cannot see and when you cannot, beyond what you can hear, beyond the news you hear, becomes the paramount, the paramount drive that we need to have as Christians. Praise God. We can become distracted by our senses. And we have an adversary who specializes in distraction. Remember in Genesis chapter 3, the first thing Satan attacks in every life is the word of God. You know what? We become distracted by the created and the distraction is for us to lose the substance that creates. So, we become distracted. Our senses become distracted by shiny objects. He went to them and they told Eve, he said, look at that fruit. Is it not nice for, it is first nice to the eye? And then is it not, don't you think it would be good for eating? And that is how many times there are distractions that are provided by what we can sense, what we can see, by our carnal inclinations. But the truth of what the deception was trying to do was to take them from what was their original identity and what was their destiny and put them into somewhere else because they were already like God. They were what? Already like God. And so a lot of times, sin and deception actually wants to make you look for something that you already are. We become distracted by our senses. If you listen to the radio program this morning, Max Lai, there was something that uh, Pastor Justin said there um, that was quite profound about the subtlety of pride. Pride, the other side of pride is self-pity. Self-pity and self-loathing. Where somebody begins to, and, and it is also uh, a form of envy. Where somebody looks at another, another person and feels, hey, look at my life. <laughs> eh? How? Eh, how, what is, eh, what is, why am I, why is my own like this? Look at how this person is making it. You know, that self-pity, self it's another kind of pride because then you have lost sight of God who created you, who at that point, can you imagine Joseph, Joseph sold by his brothers? He was not, he was not self-pitying himself. In every situation, his trust in God never went down. Either in the pit, or in the slave house, or in the prison. What kept him was his connection to God. He knew that it was not the circumstances, it was not what he could see. It was not the circumstances, it was not where he was that mattered, but who was with him. When that assurance, and that is staying connected staying connected to that source. It is not what is around that will bring your fruitfulness. It is what is within. It is where? It is what? What is within? What is within you 
if it is right, will change every wrong situation to become right. You see? But a lot of times we react to what is without. We react to somebody looked at me this way. We react to this person thinks I'm... A, a lot of those reactions are not of God. I was sharing with someone, I said, they, they, Paul, was, Paul was, was counseling the Corinthians. He said that where there is envy and strife, he said there is every evil thing. In other words, when, when someone opens the door to darkness, Anything can come through it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh -uh. You cannot determine what comes out of that door. It can range from stealing to death. So don't open the door. Hallelujah. And the way you don't open the door is to stay connected. To stay rooted. Because he said, eyes have not seen it. Ears have not heard. Neither has it been revealed to the heart of man. What God has, pre God has prepared something for you before you were born. So trust him. Hallelujah. I said, trust him. Tell yourself there is something for me. <laughs> it cannot be taken away because it is mine. There is a blessing for me. There is glory for me. There is breakthrough for me. Hallelujah. God will not deny what is yours. He said, withhold not good from whom it is due. If God gave that commandment, God will not break it himself. Everything that is due to you will come to you. I didn't hear a very... Hallelujah. You know, we are in a world and in a certain time in history where there is a lot that can distract us. We now have a lot we can trust in. Amen. Praise God. You know... I was, I think I was, I was uh, in the car with my son and I said, look, don't trust this car too much you know, because there's, there's a way you can, you can drive, you can drive, you just, you just have such faith in the car that you just turn the corner this way, you just turn it that way. You know, I, I, I'm telling you, we live in a world now where there is just room to trust, put our trust in many things. And put our trust in the bank. Put our trust in our car. Put our trust in our house. Put our trust in our technology. For many of us now, you can't go anywhere without your phone. Amen. The phone has become a mini computer. You, you go to the bank on the phone. Amen. You, you, you Facebook with somebody in the U.S. on the phone. It has, you, it, it has just become everything. That if we are not careful... The world gives us so many things to trust that we lose trust in God. Someone said, ah, ah, why do you need faith to move a mountain when there is art moving equipment? Now there's caterpillar. <laughs> there's caterpillar to blast the mountain. So what, what are you talking about? Faith can move mountain. Why do I need faith to move mountain? I just rent a caterpillar. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And, and, and that is the way things ha, are moving so subtly, it is so subtly, okay, that the world creates so many things you can just have faith in. And we forget what the Bible says. The Bible says, Jeremiah 17, it says, Cost is the man who trusts the man. And so it is a means of the world dragging people back into the curse. Because God resists the proud. He gives more grace to the humble. And humility is simply trusting in God. Amen. And so even when your car is the, the best car, is brand new, when you trust in God, when you enter the car, you still pray and say, Father, thank you for this day. Amen. Some people don't even think about that. But if you are if you are in a place where the the potholes <laughs> the potholes on the road needs certain navigation, 
<laughs> you will pray when you are living, no matter the size of your car. Amen. But there's, there are some places because, you know, the road. But you know, even here in the UK, several people die from road accidents every year. And so we make assumptions many times. But true humility is praying and trusting God. Amen. Submitting to his, his, his grace. That Jeremiah 17 says, Cost is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Whose heart departs from the Lord. So what I'm saying is that a lot of the things we see, a lot of the things we hear, a lot of the things that has created comfort around us, if we are not careful, what is happening is it makes our heart depart from the Lord. Amen. Eh? And what is happening? Satan is under the curse. Unfortunately, he has no way out. Amen. Thank God for the grace of God that God himself came and took man out of the curse. So God has taken man into this side. But Satan cannot, his destiny, his destiny is hell. He's cursed there forever. God will not change his mind about Satan. And so what he's trying to do is to gradually move people, onto his, move people into the curse by making their heart depart from the Lord, by making people forget exactly the identity. And even as Christians who are saved, if we are not careful, the Bible said, let him that stand beware lest he fall. In other words, there are so many subtleties and wires, deceptions of the devil. Praise God that we need to be careful about. In Proverbs 28, verse 26, Solomon says, He who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whoever works wisely will be delivered. To walk wisely is to walk in the fear of the Lord, is to trust God. Praise God. Say so the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. In the first instance, the justification was not you by yourself. <laughs> Amen. It is his blood that justifies us. If his blood justifies us, it demands also that we walk trusting in what he has done. And that is why the just shall live by faith. It has to be by faith. It has to be by understanding what he has said and then creating responses. You see, when we talked about persistence in prayer and the issue of the evidence of faith, sometimes when you pray, you need to know what is your point of contact because even though you have a powerful car, there's a point of ignition. Amen. Praise God. You have 200 horsepower there. But you have to ignite that engine. There's something that... And then the engine kicks to life. And then you can begin to engage different gears. First gear to move. And then at a point comes, you come to cruising level. And you can set your cruise and then, and then move. Many times to ignite is to find that biting point. You are in a situation and you have prayed. And one of the things you are waiting for is, God, how do I translate my trust into action? What step can I take? How do I demonstrate? How do I ignite heaven? How do I show God that I believe? And sometimes what you need to do is simple and small. Praise God. I said what you need to do is what? But if you don't find that ignition, if you don't find that little action, sometimes it could be that, you know, things, things are looking very dour. And all you need to do is to get up and put on your very best clothes, even though there's no job to go to, and step out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, it may look, it is always, the step you need to take is always unreasonable. Praise God. But that is always the ignition. It 
breaks the inertia in the spirit. It brings the attention of God to it. And then, you know, the entire power of the Holy Spirit, the entire power of heaven begins to, begins to push. You enter gear one. Amen. And then two, and then three, and then... You get to a point where you are no longer pushing. You are being carried and you are saying, Lord, slow down. You are saying, Lord, slow down. But the first, that, ig that ignition, you have to locate it in the spirit. You have to ask God. I remember, I remember the, the church we built in 28 days. Amen? We, the church that was built in how many days? 28 days. And we started with 10 pounds. Equivalent. Amen? Amen? God said, start building. And the question that I asked God is, with what? <laughs> he said, start building. I said, with what? What we had was not even enough. It was just enough to buy two diggers. You know, the digger, the digger, the, the, you used to dig. But I, as I was praying, I, God said, start this thing. I said, ah, with what? how do you start building? So we called the, we called the builder, and he measured 24 meters by 16 meters. That was the size of the church. And he said, we needed 800,000 to just buy materials. I said, okay, no problem. No problem. We'll start building tomorrow because that's what God said. And then we bought digger. And that was the point of the miracle. I called my assistant then, Pastor Adiola. He's in Nairobi now. Has a flourishing ministry in Nairobi. And I told you, I take. I took one. He took one. I struck the ground and I said, Lord, we start. And in 28 days, we had a church factory fitted roof, German flooring, amen, glass cutting. Where did the money come from? We had spent, we had spent close to 8,000 pounds equivalent in 28 days. Where did that money come from? I can tell you chronology day by day. The first day, the first man who came was not a member of the church. He was just passing by. He said, eh, I hear you people, you got this space. And then he went and bought some bags of cement. I can tell you what happened day by day by day by day. In 28 days, it was built, it was roofed just because of that point of obedience. It was unreasonable to have, after we bought the diggers, let me be honest with you, it was not as if we had money left to fuel the car, to come back to church the next, the next day. But God says start. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm telling you now because when we talk about persistence in prayer, persistence is to know God, give me a point of action. What can I, what can I do? What, where, what action can I, what, where can I engage my boldness to say, Lord, I trust you? It may not look reasonable. It didn't look reasonable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I can tell you many stories that when you ignite heaven, when you provoke God by a seeming simple act, God will always wait for you to do something that you can do. Are you with me? Are you with me? <laughs> he will always wait. There is always something you can do. You need to find it. When you do it, the door will open. As far as I know, this week you will laugh. Ah, 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 ah. I said this week you will praise God. I have an assurance in my spirit. There is something going on in the spirit. And I want you to tap into it. Because God will make you laugh. Amen. Hallelujah. God will visit you in the course of this week. The just shall live by faith. You know, Paul predicted that more and more people will move away from the faith because, of course, he had an idea of <laughs> where we will be around this time. 
Amen. And where a lot of times our heart, our decisions are determined by what we see. If this somebody has done this, ah, maybe I should also do that. <laughs> Amen. Not necessarily. Hallelujah. Praise God. As many as are led by the Spirit, there is a blueprint for your life. And I tell you, it is beautiful, it is glorious. It cannot be compared with somebody else. There is a crown for you. There is enough room at the top. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you will find your own throne. You will be crowned in your own place. You will long enjoy, amen, the rewards that God has planned for you. If you believe it, child, believe in amen. amen. Now, Paul predicted that more, a lot of people will stop walking in faith because people's faith will be overthrown by shining objects, by distractions. Hmm? People will think, ah, why do I need to pray? I watched a video. Now, I'm not in the habit of criticizing men of God. Amen. Praise God. But I watched a man of God, and, uh, and he was preaching, and he said, why pray when you can do public relations? That while you are praying and fasting, somebody else has gone and bought a car as a birthday present for the, first, uh, for the, the one year old of uh, the general manager, and he has gotten the contract, and you are still praying. <laughs> He said, do public relations. This is from the pulpit. This is from what? This is from the pulpit to a church congregation. He said, you are, you are, you are praying and fasting. You are wasting your time. He said, you, you need to do public relations. In other words, because if you go and now buy a car for the birthday ceremony of a one-year-old, is the one-year-old going to ride it? That's a bribe. Eh? Is that not? That's a bribe. That is, let's call it what it is. It is what? It's a bribe. You are given a bribe so that you can get the contract. And then, and then for someone in church to be telling, and the church was packed. And Paul told us, Paul told us in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, he tells us, he says, look, he said, look, there will be misleading ideas, there will be arguments and of false teachers and all kinds of things. So if you are, don't, don't allow yourself to be deceived. God will never change his standards. It does not matter what things may appear. It does not matter how successful, in quotes, things may be. It does not matter, you know, what title the person is having. There are certain truths about God that will not change. God will not be unrighteous. Amen. God will not give bribe. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. He said, now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So, Paul knew ahead. There, there will be opportunity. The word of God will be challenged. The first thing that Satan will always do is to tell you it is not exactly like that. Oh. That's not exactly what God means. <laughs> Praise God. There is another interpretation. Hallelujah. You can do PR. It's just part of it. <laughs> Amen. I will tell you, you know, it's a man's gift makes way for him now. You remember when Jesus was being tempted, Satan tried to use scriptures. Are you with me? And then Jesus said, you must be joking. You want to use my own word to deceive me? <laughs> Aren't you a joker? And so somebody can say, okay, you know, a man's gift, it will not, the, the, the gift there is now misinterpreted. Uh, are you, eh? The gift there is now misinterpreted that you go and give a bribe, just give him something so that you can get the contract. It doesn't look at whether you are qualified or not. That's not what that, that scripture is saying. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's talking about your, the, the gift of God you are endowed with will make room for you. Hallelujah. Not the gift you go and give somebody in order to get something. <laughs> Second Timothy 3, 1 to 7, I'm just saying this because, you know, I was really, I was really debating with the Holy Spirit. Lord, how, what should I do in this service? Because when I came in this morning, I just felt, look, the way I was feeling, amen, the message I had from God, that you praise him this week, that he will visit you, that you will be blessed, that something significant will happen. I thought we should just dance. <laughs> Amen. And you are going to dance because that dancing will be your, your point of contact. That ignition, you will ignite something in the spirit that will make God visit your family this week. Hallelujah. We will praise him. And as we start, we will not stop praising him. Every day you will have a reason to praise him in the name of Jesus. But I, I'm telling us this because there is a tendency to doubt that is part of our makeup as human beings. There's a tendency for our mind to kick in. We have an adversary who specializes in planting doubt, who specializes in undermining the word of God. Who wants to come to you and say, is that where you still are? That's where you are still. You are still there. That God will do it. That's where you are. Look at this person. He has gone. No. <laughs> you are still there. You say you are trusting God. Okay, be there. <laughs> you know, these are things that will be, the devil will want to provoke in your heart. Are you, are you following me? The persistence of prayer is not the repetition, like we said at the MIDS. It is the connecting. Even when doubt wants to come, pick the word again and meditate on it and say, have you not said, daddy? And then go into worship and dance. I've shared the testimony before, very early in our marriage, with my wife, I was, I was, you know, living in a, a four-bedroom bungalow owned by a major in the army. And this man began to change my rent every three months. Are you getting what I'm saying? Every three months, it just increases the rent. I said, no, 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 okay, you know what? I want to pay you for a year. <laughs> How? You know? <laughs> I mean, I, I, normally in Lagos, you pay one year ahead. In those days, I had paid one year. And then after that one year, after three months, he off the rent. I said, ah, this is not right. This is not the contract. And the man began to threaten, and uh, he said, they will check us out of the house. I said, no, I'm not paying this increment every three, three months. He said, you know, I'm in the military. Cook can happen. Anything can happen. So I don't want to give you another one year. I said, no, I, I want to pay one year ahead. So it became a dispute. And then he served us quick notice. And funny enough, when that quick notice came, that particular time that the quick, no, quick notice came, I had a contract with NNPC that I had, uh, you know, my hope, my trust was that you know, that money, when it comes, was one that is, uh, I just pay a year. The contract, for one reason or another, I had finished it. It was just the payment. The payment was delayed. And then I got quick notice later. Then I went to God and I said, okay, Daddy, what do we do now? And I had as plain as day. Are you following me? I had as plain as I'm talking to you now. God said, dance. So, we, we, my co- Conspirator is here. So I called my wife. I said, I've had something strange from God today. I said, this letter of this quit notice, I put it on the ground. I said, please, excuse me, dance. <laughs> we began to dance. We danced on the letter. We danced on the letter. We rejoiced on the letter. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, what happened is a mystery. It's a mystery because we moved into a house <coughs> bigger than the one we were living and lived there for two years free. What did I say? Free. We moved, we moved from this four-bedroom bungalow into a duplex. 
somebody had come and paid two years rent advance for that property and then it had it had a tank it had a, a, a pump a 1000 gallon tank underground 500 tank up and the, the pump was supposed to pump there was a, a borehole and the man came and it looks like the borehole was not working and the man was so angry. He came from Port Harcourt. Say, all these Lagos, these Lagos landlords, say they've deceived me. Eh, how can I live in a house like this without water? And he was very angry. <laughs> and, uh, and they met my wife. My wife said, ah, so what is happening? We, we are trying to move to a place. And he said, just, just moving. Just what? Just what? That's how we had two years rent paid for for free. Now listen to me. The first week we moved in, I'm telling you life stories now. Amen. The first week we moved in, one man was walking in front of the house. You know this uh, um, mala that they carry? Eh? <laughs> A laborer was walking in front of the house. So we just called him. I said, come, come. Look at this, um, this borehole. It looks like it's not working. The man removed his shirt. Within one hour, he had brought, cleared the thing. <laughs> the pump was working. <laughs> we became supplier of water to the whole street. We became what? The reason why this person left and was angry and forfeited the two years and said, just, just take it. Within two weeks, the water was flowing. The tank will fill up. We will pump it to the one, up, and then people will kill, and we're taking water. Why am I saying this? The point of igniting faith will look very stupid. We put a letter down. God said, dance on it. I've never, I've, I've never had, it's not as if I had a testimony like that before. God told me. He said, dance upon this letter. It is a cause for dancing. The situation at that time did not look good. But we danced on it, and God moved. Today, as you dance, God will move. I said, today, as you dance, God will move. I said, it's a season of unusual miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so, the fight against doubt is a fight that we all have to fight. You have to fight doubt. You have to demonstrate trust. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, and I'll start to round up. He said, those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. The God of this world resents trusting in God. He will resist. He will resist you trying to trust God. He will resist you. Anytime you want to put your trust in God, he will resist you. Amen. He will resist you. Because he will try to point you to something else you should rather trust. The Bible says, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, we grow in faith as we trust and obey in spite of our flesh. Are you with me? In spite of our flesh, when we trust, and that trust moves us to obey, in spite of how we feel, when, tr when truth overcomes feelings, when truth, you know, this is the truth, but this is how I feel, but Lord, not how I feel. I move myself into truth, not because I feel like, but obedience compels me to, because I know the majesty of the one who has commanded me. The one who has commanded me is greater than my feelings. You see, when, 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 when you recognize the majesty of God, the worth of God, and then you obey in spite of, I mean, look, in that situation, the normal thing, the normal thing because, or, I mean, I had access, my wife was a company secretary to a finance house, you know, and I knew definitely because in those days, it started days. 
it does not fail. NNPC, the mo the, when, once it goes to account, in 30 days it must come out. There is no, there is nothing. So I could have said, look, let's borrow some money because surely this one will come. Are you following what I'm saying? There, 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 there will always be alternatives to faith. There will always be what alternatives to trusting in God and pushing forward in faith. There will always be alternatives. But once you exercise faith, what happens is you grow. <laughs> Amen. You grow. What you can trust for increases. Until God stretches you, he cannot fill you. Many times we don't allow God to stretch us. We don't want to be stretched. Amen. And trusting and acting out what you trust in will stretch you. It will stretch you. But once God stretches you, he doesn't allow you to contract. He fills you up. <laughs> he fills you up. And then he stretches you again. And the more he stretches you, the more favor you enjoy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, quickly, I'm going to round up four keys to building faith and standing in victory. This is the real message. All that was just the introduction. Amen. One, ask. Ask God. Pray for it. Pray to stay connected. Matthew 7, 7 says, ask, it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. If you understand what I'm saying now, ask for it. Lord, on a daily basis, give me the point of contact. Give me the point of contact. You know, your point of contact may be just saying something positive. Somebody asks you, so how, how is that matter? It is well. It is very good. I'm excellent. I'm, that may just be a point of contact in a situation where ordinarily the natural, the natural thing you should say is, it is very bad. <laughs> it is very what? But you have just prayed. You have just told God to take charge. You have just said, I'll be anxious for nothing. And so if you have spoken to God and you believe God has heard you, you are not now supposed to show a, a pity because you want now men to pity you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? Because sometimes because I, you know, I can see Dennis now and uh, I just think, this person should be able to help me. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God. Uh, that is my human mind, my calculation. I've seen the, the, the position, the office, eh? maybe the car she brought. And I say, this person should be able to help me. And then immediately I change my tone so that humanly she can pity me. And I say, you know, Dennis, I've been trying. You know, I, I, I did this, I did that. He just hasn't worked, uh, you know. Because why I want had to help me. But I've forgotten that I've just spoken to God to help me. So what has happened is I have brought God to the level of that person. Amen. Amen. Now listen very carefully to what I'm saying because God will send help. God will send people to help you. God won't come down. He will send people to help you. Amen. But he is the one who will stir up their heart to do so. Amen. He will stir up their heart. He will move people. When Ahasuerus was sleeping, he was in his own bed, in his own palace, in his own house, and then God, God he couldn't sleep. <laughs> he couldn't sleep. Was it Mordecai that went to present a case to him? No, he couldn't sleep. And God organized the circumstances so that this man could not sleep until he found a way to bless Mordecai. Let it be God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask. I said ask. Number two, prove what you believe and you have prayed for. Step out. Find something to do. Link something. Take one step. No matter how little. Do something to show that I believe. Praise God. Number three, stir up the spirit of God in you. Second Timothy 1. 6 to 7. 
Stir up the gift of God in you. Stir up the spirit of God. Nourish your faith. Pray. Study. Fast. Give. Amen. Stir up the spirit of God. Number four, and finally, endure. Endure. Trials will necessarily come because you are obeying God. Challenges help us to build faith and patience. There are certain things that will occur naturally. It's just, it, it is because you are obeying God. Amen. Amen. Eh? He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Full measure. And then what? Press down. Before running over, there's always a pressing down. <laughs> Amen? Press down. Shaking together, and then what? But sometimes we don't want any pressing down or shaking together. I say, Ah, God, you are shaking me too much. This shaking, this shaking is too much. Now, he's shaking you in order for you to run over. Because sometimes we must consent to be tested. Jesus consented to be tested. Acts chapter 2, verse 2. He consented, he went into the wilderness, the Bible said, to be tempted of the devil. Hallelujah. And so there are times when the, the pressure is simply because you are doing what is right. Amen. And you are refusing to compromise. Are you listening to me now? Praise God. Because you are refusing to compromise, there is the pressure. The enemy will come with pressure. He wants you to break away from faith. He wants you to step out of that realm where you are standing, where you are trusting, where you are worshipping, where you are believing. Where it, it brings all manner of temptations. It brings, it increases the pressure. James says, my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. He said, let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So there is something God wants to perfect that God wants to complete and God is watching as the enemy is pressing and God is saying press because I will bring the overflow. You are permitted to press. Amen. But I'm preparing for the overflow. Your time of overflow is now. Have you been pressed? Your time of overflow is where? Now. Your time of praise is now. The lion of the tribe of Judah will roar on your behalf. Rise up to your feet. Rise up to your feet. I want you to begin to celebrate God. Celebrate the king of kings who has decided to visit you in this season. Celebrate him. Give him praise. I declare a new vision for your future. It's coming alive. It's coming alive. The lion of the tribe of Judah is roaring on your behalf. The shout of glory is coming towards you. Just give him praise. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can stand in your way when you understand the mystery of praise.